What up, players? It's World Boss Tay up in this mug. So here we go. Medical Servitor, Nurse Servitor from the Death Corp Creed Quartermaster Retinue Kit. Awesome model, just so creepy and Hellraiser looking. And here are the paints I use: Balthazar Gold, Mournfang Brown. This isn't in any particular order. Bugman's Glow. Just have all these paints around you if you want to get your guy up to this level. Othuan Gray there, Ceramite White, Lead Belcher. Cadian Flesh Tone, Mephiston Red, Abadabon Black, The Fang, Nuln Oil, Drew Kai Violet. And I also primed this guy in a black primer. I, actually, I think, no, he was primed like this. I got this as part of a a, uh, a trade a long time ago if you remember my unboxing the death Corp krieg giant box and i think i got this guy he was already he was already primed i believe so yeah i'm showing you what this guy looks like just a fantastic model he was already built he was already primed he's only got one of these little canister things on his back though the other one popped off and the little connecting bit um, I just, I kept trying to connect the second canister, but with all of his other arms in the way like that, I, I think I'm just going to leave it off. That's okay, but it, it's, it looks fine with one. So we're going to start with Mornfang Brown. I decided, just like the little carrying servitor from a couple of videos ago, that I was going to make his robes look really um, dirty, dark, grimy, and just emphasize the the squalor and the just filthy grossness of the battlefield and uh, that way the, the just the thought of him coming coming towards you with these medical implements to operate on you while you're lying in the battle middle of the battlefield is like enough to make a soldier go no I'm good I'm good and uh, okay so if if you're painting this guy, I would suggest maybe don't put all the arms on. Maybe paint some of them separately or leave them off and then just paint them afterwards because it was a little tricky getting into all of the, the parts underneath, especially later on the Imperial Eagle on his apron and uh, some, par some parts of the apron itself in his face uh, because of all the little spindly bits. Okay, so I decided to base the apron in Ulthuan Grey. What I wanted was like a very white surgical apron to contrast with the dirty grimy clothes the robes he's wearing and uh, later on what I'm planning to do is spatter it with blood and just make it all gross and grimy and and all that stuff but for now uh, we want it to get as clean and as as, sh as, as sharp as possible So I'm, I'm thinking about it as I'm painting, and I think at, at about this point, I'm looking at the Ultuan Gray, which I thinned down on my wet palette, and I'm probably thinking it's spreading out a little bit. It's not, it's, uh, I mean, separating. The pigment is separating a little bit, and it's not sticking and, and doing what I want. So maybe if I had a chance to do this again, instead of Ultuan Gray, maybe Celestra Gray, because Celestra Gray is a base coat color. It's a base color, so it's the pigment is thicker, it sticks to the model easier, it doesn't spread out, and the pigment doesn't separate as much. So uh, maybe Othuan Gray would be a second color, but I'd base in Celestial Gray first. Lead Belcher. And it's no big deal because we're, we're going over the colors with uh, second coats and third coats of the same, same color, it's just it would have saved me some hassle. And I think at this point I'm realizing, okay, maybe I could have started with lead belcher first, and then and then done the robes after. My my technique is usually my philosophy behind painting is start from the in, the inner part of the model, and work yourself outward. So in this case, the lowest layer on this model was those brown robes. He's not. There's no exposed anything underneath that. So I wanted to start with that. Then I moved to the apron, and now I moved to all the machinery. But because there's so much machinery and bionics and crazy augmented arms and spider limbs like that, it's really easy while I'm brushing this on to get some of that lead belcher paint where I don't want it to go. And then you just end up having to clean it up later. So an easier solution so that I wouldn't have to go back over in between video clips and 
touch up the parts that got touched with these uh, with the silver pigment would have been to start with the silver first. All right, and I just like to say that uh, this video is also, besides being a, a tutorial, is also a video appreciation, uh, an appreciation video for July Painting Challenger participant Tukiwai. Tukiwai said that he would, when I asked the Day 24 question, if, if Games Workshop could make a model of, out of you, what model would it be? What would you be equipped with? And uh, talk a little bit about it. And he had this awesome answer that he would want to be an Ordo Xenos Inquisitor with alien tech, like El like uh, Eldar weapons and uh, stuff like that. So um, I think, you know, if, if you ever get an awesome figure like that made, Tukiwai, then this guy would be right there with you, fighting the good fight, <laughs> raiding all the aliens for their best stuff, and traveling the universe uh, with your royal holy inquisition. So um, so thank you for participating. Tukiwai's project was uh, really awesome this year. He did a Flames of War finish uh, I don't know if it's like a battalion or, or, or just a company. And uh, while I'm talking, I'm, I'm going up, I believe, to Ceramite White on the apron here. But I mean, with the 15 millimeter scale from Flames of War, it just looks amazing what he was able to finish. <laughs> the finish he was able to finish. Hey, well, boss, that was such a horrible pun. I know, Igor, you've got to stop me before I make horrible puns like that. I'm sorry. I was eating my uh, lunch, my uh, cat sandwich. Uh, but back to Tukiwai, his, like, if you look at his models, I, I, I want to say, if you have not seen his July Painting Challenge, go to his channel, subscribe to it, and start from day one. Okay, Balthazar Gold here, what I'm going to do with the Balthazar Gold is I'm going to paint like accents, so braces, brackets rather um, little gears and uh, the, the gold isn't going to be it's not going to end up a gold color it's going to end up like a, a bronze or a brass cogs and, and little wheels and spinny things so it's just something to break up all the silver uh, but yeah watch Tookie Wise project from day one because just to see the amount of work he was able to get done the 15 millimeter scale really brings out the amount of progress you are able to do and in 29 days whole man just the infantry and the tanks and the vehicles and uh, he's so smart too about the whole the game and the history and because flames of war is a historical game you know the more uh the more ardent and enthusiastic gamers out there who really know the history they can uh, really get a kick out of it and i know that tukiwai does and i get a kick just watching his projects so Definitely, please follow him. Go give him a subscription if you haven't yet. If you're one of my new subscribers, then uh, please subscribe to Tukiwai. I'll put his information in the description below. And uh, yeah, great guy, fantastic guy. He's participated, I think, uh, this was his second year participating in the July Painting Challenge. So, so always glad to have him aboard. And everybody, uh, and if you want to get in on the July Painting Challenge, you know, we welcome as many people as we can get to just come out of the community and and um, do a do a month long project. It's pretty nuts, though. It's pretty crazy. I'm thinking of making like certificates or or like medals or ribbons or, or something to uh, to give people who participated so they can have something to show for it. Because boy, howdy, 30 days of hobby is just unbelievable the amount of work that you put in even if you have a small project you only do like one character model or something like having to do 30 days is it's pretty pretty nice 31 days how many days were in july i don't even remember all right bugman's glow we're gonna get on to the face now face painting i hear uh the lady boss's dog coco downstairs so i might have to jump off in a bit Okay, yeah, I'll be right back.
Whew. Dog is crazy. Yeah, so they have squirrels here at the lady boss's place. Well, not she doesn't have squirrels, but there are squirrels in the backyard. And um, you know, being from raised in Hawaii, I've not seen squirrels in my life really before. And um, it's just crazy. Dog loves to bark at them. All right, back to Ceramite White. So you can see sometimes it's best to go with a second coat, especially if you're doing a model. That's like a character model or a figure that you have in your collection that you want to really make a showpiece, centerpiece model. Don't be afraid to go back with a second or even a third coat of color. And um, what that will do is it'll really solidify the color. It'll help it to stand out. And um, you, you'll even notice that it might help with any highlighting, especially if you're doing a highlight color and you're adding a second application of it. Uh, it can really help to tie in your model colors together. Usually I only do one coat of paint before I move on. My style of painting is really help the, the, the I don't want to say beginner, but uh, help someone who's painting that is maybe not perhaps like at, at a golden demon level yet. I, I consider myself pretty, you know, high tabletop standard. And uh, I don't know if I would say pro painted just yet. Uh, I could do pro painted stuff, I think, but I like to share techniques that anybody can pick up and use right off the bat. And that's why I like to do these tutorials. I like to show this, these are the exact brush strokes that I do. You can stop, you can pause, you can go back. A lot of online uh, hobbyists out there that, that post videos will describe colors and, and color theory and show kind of how they start painting on a color but it is pretty tedious to do these longer videos and uh, sometimes they'll fast forward through it and you might miss a step. Okay, I have it on black now and um, I know when I first started I want to see I wanted to see everything, every single color being applied and uh, so I could take my model from front to finish. Also, okay, so what I'm doing with Abaddon Black is I'm blocking out the pieces that I know I'm going to have to go back and paint another color later, so I decided I'm going to try painting this guy's eyeballs in. So uh, a quick horizontal line with the very tip of my brush with some black paint on it will create a nice dark space to paint the pupils in. And the back part you saw me painting. Um, hanging off his back were like vials, I believe, so I'm gonna paint them as if they're holding fluid a little bit later. Right now I'm just painting them black to get rid of that lead belcher color. By now the Bugman's Glow has had time to dry, so I'm gonna go back in with the Cadian Flesh Tone and watch these strokes. I'm going from the middle of his face and I'm pulling outward. And what this does is it creates the effect of stretched skin because this guy his face is not, I don't think it's his face anymore. I think in, in my head, this servitor has been so um, rewired and broken down and, and taken all of his organic bits taken out for scrap and replaced with augmentics and stuff that he did not have a face anymore. At, at least that's what I like to think. And I'm sorry it's so blurry right now, but um, in my mind, the fluff for this guy is that he's been so changed by his bionics as we move on to Rackarth Flesh for the final highlights on the skin that um, it's just this horribly gross disgusting like it's not even a face so his his original face has been removed and taken apart and his skull replaced by machinery and the only thing left is like the the basic part of his brain that orders limbs to do things that they can rewire and and, and program as a servitor but <laughs> in my head, people didn't like that, especially when he's coming up to you with all of these needles and buzz saws and, and clippers and stuff. Uh, it, it did not create a very good effect for morale, so the higher-ups decided to take the face of a well-known, uh, let's say, medic of the company and someone that everyone was kind of familiar with, like a nice grandfatherly or like fatherly figure that was always helpful and kind or someone, you know, I mean, it's grimdark, so how helpful and kind can you be? But somebody who was like a good guy 
and <laughs> after when he died, they uh, took his face and they removed it and they put they grafted it onto this disgusting servitor thing. So, <laughs> oh my gosh! All right, so I showed Seraphim Sepia. That was a mistake. We're we're gonna paint on non oil. We're just gonna give this guy a bath everywhere. I don't think I touched his apron though, but everywhere else, all the machinery, all the robes. Uh, don't touch his face though, because we're gonna give that a different wash. But just about everything else except the face and the apron is getting this non-oil wash. Uh, I think that's hilarious because you know the Death Corps of Krieg, they're just all they care about is results, right? So so the Death Corps of Krieg commander is getting all these complaints from other regiments or other Imperial uh, citizens or whatever that uh, his his servitor is his medical servitor guy is, is creeping everybody out so he's like all right fine um i'll i'll fix it and that, that was his solution take the face of the most popular well it would be like if somebody took mr rogers face oh my gosh that's terrible i can't believe i said that that was in such poor taste uh mr rogers was just the first person that came to my mind not because he's dead or anything but because i grew up watching Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood was like my jam when I was a little boy, a little war boss, when I was just a little boss. And um, yeah, if <laughs> if someone was like, oh, my giant creepy spider robot is creeping you out, little boy, well, you know, you'll remember Mr. Rogers. So see, look, he's got Mr. Rogers' face. And I have to go to therapy now. Okay, so you can kind of see where I painted the Balthazar gold in the little uh, cogs and, and circular bits within the joints. Again, that's just for accent. We want to accent some parts just so that it doesn't look like all silver. Kai Violet now. This is what we're gonna use to shade his face, the skin of his face, just make it look really sickly. I kind of do this with my uh, Dark Eldar loincloths, which are made out of flayed human flesh, painted up just like you would regular skin, and uh, highlighted up to a nice bone color, in this case Rackarth flesh, and then go over it with uh, flesh tone and purple. I decided not to do a flesh tone with this guy because there's so little bit skin. I wanted to just make it all seem really just sickly and stretched out and and uh, just gross looking. So I think at this point I'm noticing that uh, because of the the arms being glued on before painting. Um, and because the arms are all kind of bent in the way they are, which is unfortunate. I wish when I'd gotten the giant Death Corps of Krieg box that this model was not assembled. I would have loved to assemble it. Uh, because of the way they are, it's going to be difficult to get into some places with the metallic part. So, uh, with the lead belcher, I mean. So I'm going to be going back in later and doing that. You want to turn your models at every angle you can so that you can make sure that the, all the pit, all the bits are painted correctly which is why having this cork is really big it's a it's a huge help what i'm doing now is i decided to paint the imperial eagle on his apron there i decided to paint it red and i think with the white apron it's a, a little nod to like a medical service person 
that uh, you know that has the red cross except in this case instead of a cross it's the Imperial Eagle and so yeah here we go I, I got some of that Mephiston red just because of if you look at the location of that eagle it's really difficult to get in at any angle without getting some of that red paint on other bits and so as I'm painting over the red splotches I notice on his left lower limb that most of his um, most of the inside of that lower limb is is not even painted it's still that black primer so I'm gonna have to go in All right so forget the the focus there but just showing you a look right here at what I was able to do the last paint we're gonna add is the fang and when you add the fang to a glass what's supposed to be like a glass vial a, a beaker a bottle uh, it'll create a nice looking glass kind of effect so in the back I've got, he's got these vials and uh, unfortunately it looks like some some of the lead belcher silver flakes got into the known oil and uh, it's, that's what's creating that reflective effect so I'm, I'm trying to paint over it now and as you can see, when you when you paint the fang on, it creates a great base for glass, which we'll highlight next. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Check out Tuki Y and stay tuned for part two of my how to paint a disgusting, crazy, grim dark nurse. Latest players.